Welcome collectors, I'm Tommy with Diecast Emporium. As you know, thank you so much for tuning in to another video. Today we're going to go through very quickly, as the title says, the 2020 Matchbox Basic Line story so far. So we're going to go over very briefly all of the castings that have been released. So let's go ahead and get started. The first one, we have the VW, the new Beetle. So... Very basic release, but I kind of like it that way. You'll hear me say that a lot. I love vehicles that are clean and realistic looking. Uh, this one has the VW badge on the front and decos on the rear and the front, so really like this convertible version. So if you're into Volkswagen Beetles, this is one to pick up. And uh, by the way, the license plate on the back says Sun and Fun. So very nice looking car. Certainly one you're going to want to add to your collection. All right, next, we have the 1994 Chevy Caprice Classic Police in the New York City Police Department livery. Love this car. Uh, I am from the state of New York, so obviously this was a must to add to my collection. Um, authentic NYPD decos, of course, with the uh, courtesy, professionalism, respect on the back door of the CPR. The light bar is part of the window, which you will often see on emergency vehicles by mas Matchbox, but if you are a customizer, you can easily detail that light bar and give this vehicle some rear lights and some headlights, again, to add detail to it. But overall, nice solid casting. Next, we have the VW Golf GTI, 1976. So a German-European style hatchback, commonly known as the Rabbit as it pays homage to a rabbit right in front of the rear wheel and the name rabbit behind the front wheel. Even a nice little windshield wiper casted in uh, on the rear hatch right there. No taillights or anything like that, but you do have uh, the Volkswagen badge and GTI badge on the front of the grill, which we, you will see momentarily here as it spins around. So a decent amount of effort went into this, and I kind of like it in that Screamer orange color. All right. Next, we have the 1941 Cadillac Series 62. You want to talk about great-looking paint choices. How about that color green? Oh, yeah. Huge fan of this casting and this color choice, and especially the tan interior. Very reminiscent of a car uh, from the early 40s. Certainly would look right at home. Um, on an early 40s train layout, definitely. Great looking car. All right, let's go to Italy for a little bit. 2016 Alfa Romeo Giulia. Me, personally, not a huge fan of uh, Alphas. They are notoriously unreliable in the real world, and honestly, the styling and design does nothing for me, personally. Uh, but that's just my opinion. The overall casting... Is decent. It captures the uh, exhaust pretty well. And I do like that this version has the windows down on the front. So, there you go. All right. In a pink rose color, we have the 57 Ford Thunderbird. I enjoy this casting a lot. I like the covered spare wheel on the back. Um, I, I do, I, I think the paint job, personally, in my opinion, is very feminine, but I think the color is very nice. It does stand out well with the cream interior. So, not a bad looking car. All right. On the other end of the car culture world, you have those that love classics, and you have those that love classics that turn them into rat rods. And that's what this vehicle is paying homage to. You have the 1933 Ford Coupe or Coupe. Um, very popular with the rat rodding, uh, hot rod scene. Two different style wheels, larger wheel in the back, smaller in the front. This year's edition reads 166 Matchbox Speed Shop with Bell Helmets. And a couple other sponsors throughout. Uh, again, as I just mentioned, very popular in the collector community. And these are exceptionally popular for uh, customizers who enjoy drilling these out and doing their own custom paintwork and things of that nature. I've seen some awesome customs on the Matchbox collectors and forum sites. From Rat Rods 
to Japanese domestic market trucks. Here is the Subaru Sambar. Second release for this vehicle. It was blue last year. It's white this year. Very basic. A uh, very small casting. Um, it's about the same size as the Honda CVCC that you'll see in a minute. So a very small truck. But of course the real S Subaru Sambar is quite tiny as well. All right, next we have the Chow Mobile, which is the food truck. This has been done in many different liveries or paint jobs this year. It's the Lobster and Crab Cakes food truck. Very nice decos all over this. The Matchbox design team spent a lot of time on this, and it clearly shows with the lobster uh, cage, seafood menu. Honestly, for a, what they refer to as Matchbox Originals or Fantasy Castings, vehicles that are not licensed... Uh, meaning that this isn't a Ford van or a Chevy van. Uh, very well done. This is very believable um, because it's based on, you know, a real vehicle. A really Food trucks are real. This could pass as something you'd really see on the street. So, again, good job. All right. One of my favorites. It's no secret that, um, you know, for the most part, I, uh, I'm the construction guy. So, you know, I collect... The adult construction scale model, so it's nice to see a Matchbox vehicle that is a construction vehicle. Again, not exactly licensed, but this is based off of a uh, telescopic forklift. So this boom part here actually telescopes into three different, or telescopes out into three different sections. This forklift goes up and down, um, and it does go up and down on this version here. So there's a lot of quote-unquote play value there. For a dollar toy. Very popular. Nice to see something like this. And obviously the cab is offset to one side to give the operator better visibility. <coughs> Excuse me. And these, uh, these vehicles f feature four-wheel steering. Obviously not on this toy, on the real one. Alright, next we have... The Garbage King, another fantasy casting that's based on a real vehicle. Obviously, garbage trucks are real. And to take that a step further, you don't have to look very hard on here to know that this paint scheme or paint job is based, based off of a very popular real-life garbage company, garbage collection company, truck manufacturer. That's uh, very obvious. In fact, I bet you if you were to match the paint coat of the blue and the white, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if it's identical. So, again, very nice, nice job there. The cab is a cab over cab, which means, you know, it's a cab over engine. Um, that part is die cast metal. This is plastic. Even has a fleet number on it. You have your DOT striping, which again, adds realism to it. Here you can see the compactor in the back, and that's what compacts all the trash forward. So not a, not a bad job. All right, next up we have... The Ford F550 Super Duty. Now, this is not how this truck looks out of the package. I've done a little bit of work to this, and I'm still working on it. I added some headlights. I painted the brush bar, uh, painted the hose rails and the toolboxes. So all of that is yellow um, if you were to buy this. So it's not detailed out like this. But this is, again, a favorite among the adult collectors because this truck scales out to approximately 187 scale in the modeling community. So these are very popular to be drilled out, painted in, you know, whatever emergency service colors you're using. And even these cabs are great to be mounted on other truck frames because, again, the 550 uh, scales out to other Ford F-Series scales in 187. So it's very, very popular, and it's a great alternative to the River Point Station uh, mini pumper trucks that are in excess of $30 when you can get one of these for a dollar. So if you have to model on a budget or you want a fleet of these, you know, instead of paying $90 for three of them by River Point, you can pay $3. So there's a considerable cost, 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 cost saving measurement there. Jeez, easy for me to say. Uh, but overall, this version in the San Luis Obispo Fire Department paramedic scheme, very nicely done. That is a real department, and it is a reoccurring department that Matchbox, you know, livery that they like to do over the years. So, not, not a bad-looking truck. Definitely one of my favorites from the year so far. All right. Now that I'm not tongue-tied anymore, hopefully, 
Let's go on to the Road Raider. This is a Matchbox original, a fictitious vehicle uh, based on a SWAT or your special weapons and tactics police truck. You can see that with the, you know, the covering and the armoring on the doors and the windshield. This is my favorite part about this. If you look very closely, I'm trying to get it just right in the light, there's two sleeping uh, canine dogs in the back. So, not my most favorite casting, but I do love that aspect of the, the police working dogs uh, working exceptionally hard in the back. So, do love that. All right. Next, we have the MBX Flatbed King. This is also in MP, MB, PD livery, Matchbox Police Department livery. This truck, also known as a rollback because it rolls back like that to pick up a disabled vehicle. And it is big enough to haul some Matchbox vehicles, like here's your Civic CVV. This is obviously not a very realistic real life real life test because if you own a uh, Honda or a Toyota, chances are that um, it's probably still running if you took care of it, so you probably wouldn't need this. But anyway, that's one that would fit on there. All right, next up, back to fire trucks for a little bit. Here is the classic Seagrave fire engine, another exceptionally popular vehicle with us. When I mean us, I mean the adult collector scale model community. Um, tons of beautiful repaints and customs I've seen on these. This truck was exceptionally popular, you know, as many as 70 years ago, 60, 70 years ago in the real world. Um, so always, always fun to see this come out in different colors. All right, moving right along here. We have the police interceptor in the Air Force Skybusters livery. Uh, Skybusters, if you're not familiar is Matchbox, is, is a line by Matchbox that focuses on aircraft. Um, so you can have one of these if you collect your, uh, if you collect any Matchbox Skybusters. So ingenious marketing there goes quite well. You can have a security force for your airport that you're working on or that your kids are working on. Um, so nice, nice to see that. Makes sense. And you do have your pit maneuver bar on the front. PIT is an acronym for Pursuit Intervention Technique. So, very nice. Very realistic looking cop car. All right, back to supercars. You have the Audi R8, based on the 2007 model year. Another clean looking vehicle. Big fan of Audis, uh, for the most part, particularly the Audi R8. When this came out, it was revolutionary for a lot of different reasons. Particularly the style of engine that they had. Uh, mounted in the rear. So there is that one. We'll leave Germany, head over to Britain, and check out the Land Rover Evoque, 2015 model year. Love the color choice of this, and Matchbox, in their uh, opening part series, released a, a Land Rover for this year in black. Personally, I think this one takes the cake. Just like that red a whole lot better. Let's head back to Germany and back in time to 1974 with the VW Thing. Interesting color choice here. Uh, not sure what they were going for other than an old military-style look. The German military uh, has and did have several Volkswagen vehicles uh, in their arsenal throughout history. Not sure entirely if they ever had any things, but um, they did have a whole lot of other things. So, I don't know. But certainly a unique color choice. All right. 2003. Mini Cooper. Very, very interesting color choice here. Again, with red. It seems to be a lot of stuff that's red this year uh, in the Matchbox line so far. Interesting that they chose the 2003 version, too. That's when uh, the remake of The Italian Job came out. And there were several Mini Coopers in that movie, including a red one like this. All right, so next we have the 63 Austin Healey Roadster. Gorgeous paint job. Kind of this cream and uh, red interior. Great take on a uh, British Roadster. One of the best customs I ever saw of this was, uh, not too long ago actually, a gentleman had managed to cut the hood open 
and 3D printed an engine, painted it up, detailed it, and uh, posed this with the hood open. And I was like, man, I wish I had that kind of skill in time. Because uh, certainly that is, that's incredible. All right, back to Germany we go. Night. 19 or 19 let's try that again 2015 amg gt 63 s so this is i don't know why that says 2015 this is a much newer version this is probably 2019 um amg is the performance end of mercedes-benz which is kind of comical if you've ever driven most mercedes-benz they don't really need a performance version um or a performance branch but again, very much enjoy this car. I'm a big Mercedes guy, huge fan of the Silver Arrows. Um, this one is clean, solid choice of the wheels for this. The grill looks perfect. It has that aggressive feel, reminds me of um, kind of the AMG. Oh, shoot, what was it called? One that came out about 10 years ago that had the gull wing doors. Reminds me of that style vehicle. Just very nice looking. I dig it. All right, now on to the model that if it doesn't win Matchbox Most Popular Vehicle of the Year, I will be shocked. It's not one of my favorites, but it seems everybody else in the world likes it. 1976 Honda CVCC. Japanese hatchback here. This has been a smash hit with the collectors, particularly us, again, the adult collector community. California license plate that reads, My 76 Toy. Uh, not sure how well the color is coming through on the camera. Again, I'm off to the side grabbing these and filming them, but it is a mustard yellow style cover color. Um, definitely very popular, again, with the adult collectors, particularly those that are in their, their 40s or 50s that would have seen these uh, as their, maybe as their dad owned one of these or something growing up. All right, on to Barney. Just kidding. Here is the... Mercedes G-Wagon. This is the uh, Mercedes-Benz G550 uh, in purple. Don't know why they chose Barney Purple for this. Um, but it's certainly, you'd certainly get noticed if you were cruising down uh, Sunset Boulevard or something like that in a purple uh, G-Wagon. You, you definitely w would not be trying to hide from paparazzi then, for sure. Great-looking truck, larger, larger scale matchbox model takes up almost the entire blister uh good looking good looking truck not sure again not sure on the paint choice uh, maybe they just had some extra purple laying around they wanted to get rid of all right 1969 bmw 2002 classic german car do like it um i like the taillights like the bmw 2002 old style license plate that's on here very clean, very professional looking. That's how you make a good car. You don't need wild and crazy graphics or sponsors all over it. Um, very good. I like it. Okay. Next we have the 1935 Ford Pickup. So this is another, you know, Rat Rod inspired vehicle. Uh, this has the original Kingston Pop. Home delivery, our specialty, the best soda pop since 1935, which is applicable because this is a 1935 uh, model truck. A couple years ago, this thing came out. It was almost impossible to find. Um, certainly, certainly um, was a, was very, very popular. And uh, I don't think I ever found the original in the store. So it was nice to, nice to find one of these this year, definitely. Okay. All right, so next we have the 75 Chevy Caprice. So this is different than the police Caprice, obviously. This is a 1975. The police was a 1994, so, you know, about 20 years difference in body style and uh, designing there. This has also been a huge hit with the customizers because I've seen low-rider versions of this done and custom wheels done on this. So, very unique. All right, back to Detroit we go. Well, actually, if we just did a Monte, if we just did a Caprice, we're still in Detroit. 2018 Ford Mustang convertible in what other color could they have chosen here? In Ford blue, man, this looks good. I think this is something I would drive. Gorgeous looking paint. Again, another California license plate. This one with wild Stang on the back. 
not much else to say about this other than, in my opinion, I think it's one of the models of the year. Looks great. I do love the splitter that they have included on this. Looks great. Okay. Sticking with vehicles that are fun and stuff that I will never own. Polaris uh, Razor. This is a side-by-side, -side, you know, sport utility vehicle. Fun stuff. Uh, again, just, you know, we'll never have like 20, 25 grand to spend on stuff to play with. So, one can dream. Anyway, unique casting for this year. One of the brand new releases. There you go, copyright 2019. So, any of, anything that's copyrighted 2019 will be a new release for 2020. That's just how it works. So, unique. And, uh, for what I've seen, it's, it's, it's sold relatively well. Don't see too many of them on the pegs, despite there being three of these uh, in the case, at least, that I bought and I unboxed. On the contrary, this is one of the most difficult models to find thus far, with only, with only one being in the case. This is the 1995 Nissan Hardbody D21 pickup. Oh yeah, check that out. If I was old enough to drive in the early to mid-90s, this is something that I probably would have driven for sure this casting introduced these new style of off-road wheels for matchbox in the back you have a spare tire and some chains and on the rear you have a trailer hitch again an exceptionally popular model this truck will probably give the cvcc a run for its money in terms of the most popular matchbox basic model uh, of 2020 i would presume anyway all right back to Porsche, and we have an 85 Porsche 911 Rally in green and white. Certainly an interesting uh, choice of colors there. I don't think it looks particularly great myself, but hey, my opinion doesn't matter for anything, right? And certainly a jerry can and an extra spare wheel on top in, uh, in green. Never seen a wheel that's green, but again, hey, nothing a little uh, customizing or paint touch-up can do. On the side, you have uh, LR58 Matchbox Rally 2020 and some other custom sponsors. All right, so a lot, initially, I was one of the ones that laughed at this release, but this is actually based on a real vehicle. Uh, my understanding was that this was originally created for Chiquita, uh, one, one, of the, one of the banana brands, maybe Chiquita, I think, and... Then afterwards, this guy actually still drives this vehicle around and gives rides, thus the extra seats. I think it does a lot of things for charity, uh, maybe make a wish, things like that. So good on him. This vehicle has been ex exceptionally popular, again, with the adult collectors. Again, never would have in a million years seen that happening. I thought this was going to be one of those that uh, the kids were after. The banana part actually separates from the chassis, just like that. So that is the uh, big banana car. Again, a real, real car. All right. I can be biased on this channel, right? It's my channel. This is one of my all-time favorite Matchbox castings, not just of the year, but of all time. That's what all time would imply, right? This is the uh, International Workstar Brush Fire Truck. And this year, they are very obviously paying homage to the old show Emergency with L.A. County Fire Department Rescue 51. Very cool that they did that. This is another casting that is exceptionally popular with the um, customizers and the HO community as well. So there are a lot of aspects on this truck, that, such as the cab, that do scale out to HO scale with some modification. And I just always thought that this was the quintessential Matchbox vehicle. The perfect toy. Um, and they've done some excellent paint schemes for this truck. So always thought it looked great. That's my two cents. All right. One that could be in the automotive fabulous flop file. Here's the 1961 Ford Falcon Ranchero. So this was Ford's effort uh, to combat and go up against the Chevy or the El Camino, which failed miserably if you do some research and look at the sales of the two. So it's rather comical. But hey, you got to give them uh, an A for effort for trying. 
that's business. You're always going to have competition. So it's nice to see one of these that Matchbox did. White, you have Ford on the back. Again, very clean, nothing, nothing too uh, significant to write home about. But it's kind of unique to have this casting. I think this was done in like a, a red or, you know, maybe a rose pink color similar to the, the 57 uh, T-Bird that you saw earlier. <coughs> Excuse me, pardon me, that was released earlier. So this isn't the first release for this, but nevertheless, there it is. Okay, Nissan Titan Warrior Concept 2016. Another big truck, another hit. There it is. We're going to have to speed this video up here. So there is that truck. Again, not the first time you've seen it, but there it is. All right. Next up, we have the 2016 Ram flatbed. This has the Sierra Summit Campground service truck on it. And in the back, you have a duffel bag, chainsaw, and chain, along with a huge, big uh, toolbox in the back. Again, if you wanted to paint those, bring out some detail, you could. This has also been very popular. Okay. On the other end of the popular spectrum, you have the Sonora Shredder. This is the proverbial peg warmer. And this is based on a Baja kind of race truck. You have Team 5 or 55 Matchbox on it, spare wheel on the back. Very generic casting, and one that has not been very well received. And, uh, well, one that sits on the pegs. That's what a peg warmer is. Not much else to say about it. Next, we have the 2014 Nissan NV van. This I can live with. Sea Aquarium Pacific Research Center Visitor Services van. So this is, you know, obviously something that you would see in an aquarium. Has a trailer hitch on it. Very generic um, looking service van. So you could do some customs, of course, with this if you wanted to and whatever company livery you want. And it is, you know, JDM, so you have your JDM obsessed collectors that will buy anything JDM. So I'm sure this will sell well. All right. Next you have the 2010 Porsche Panamera. This is another exceptional example of a Matchbox casting. Porsche Panamera, make waves on the license plate. Great looking casting. Overall style is just proportionate. Looks really good. And we'll let it spin around to the front. Great looking headlights. And that Porsche badge on the hood, again, is just, just looks superb in this scale. Alright, next we have the Lamborghini Gallardo LP560-4 Polizza, the police car. So this is based off of the police car that you would see in Abu Dhabi. Because that country has the budget to afford police cars like that. Good for them. Um... Again, another police car that has the light bar that's part of the windshield, so nothing out of the ordinary there. The Deco reads Emergency Vehicle, MBX Police, number 110. So if you guys saw my unboxing video of this particular one, and I, I stand by the joke that I made. This is the Hummer H2 with MBX Ocean uh, Habitat Support Vehicle, Marine 1. And I don't know if Matchbox did this intentionally or if I'm the only one to connect the dots here, but this is the most hilarious, ironic thing that Matchbox has ever done. The Hummer H2 is one of the most economic, unfriendly vehicles that ever graced the Earth, and yet they deco it up as a Habitat Marine support vehicle. Uh, the irony there is almost too hilarious. But anyway, you have... There you go. So there's Marine 1 Hummer H2. All right, next you have the crap... Crop Master. Knew I was going to do that. Darn it. The Crop Master. Matchbox old school tractor. Um, not much else to say about it. It's an old school tractor. Ma another Matchbox original. There you go. Here's one of my favorite castings. Could sure be no surprise to most of you people. This is the Matchbox Backhoe. Uh, in INC, or Ink Construction Deco, really the only moving part on this, sorry to keep doing this, I'm really trying to speed this video up, is the loader arms which go up and down. The bucket doesn't tilt or anything. And ironically, even though this machine is called a backhoe, they didn't move, they didn't put any functionality into the actual backhoe mechanism of this at all. But it is nice to see another addition in the INC reoccurring theme line. So, love that. 
Hope to see more INC releases this year and every year. Good on you, Matchbox. All right, next we have the Chevrolet Colorado Extreme truck. Solid choice of coloring here in blue. I think it looks good. Has that nice snorkel thing on the side. I like it. All right, next we have the 59 Dodge Cornet Police in white with blue on it. Again, I went into detail in the unboxing of this, how much I loved it, how much I had a lot of nostalgia factor on it, and it had that gumball-style light. Check out that video if you want a closer look. All right, next we have the 47 and a half AD 3100 truck in National Parks livery. Again, if you're familiar with National Parks at all and you collect Matchbox, you know that this is going to be very difficult to find and worth a pretty penny, as all of the National Park releases are, again, another reoccurring theme like INC and NYPD a favorite among collectors. Down to the last couple, and it's two Mercedes vehicles. First, we have the Mercedes Unimog uh, U300 Unimog. The U in 300 stands for utility. This is a vehicle that's used for everything from firefighting to construction to utility work around the city. This one is just basically a standard truck. Uh, very cool. If you want to Google images of Unimogs, you will see all the different applications that they are used for. Always nice to see these released uh, occasionally. And the last, but certainly not least, the story so far in 2020 when it comes to Matchbox. This is the Mercedes 220 SE for Evie Rosequist, the uh, female touring car champion. This is an exceptional story. Again, I, I, I don't want to keep repeating myself, but uh, this is a partnership that Matchbox has entered, and they are giving away these to fourth graders in an attempt to empower young girls that they can do whatever they want in the automotive community uh, in, a, in an attempt to break down those gender barriers. So, excellent story there. But there you have it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. This is the story so far in 2020 with the Matchbox Basic 1 to 100 range. Let me know down in the comment section below which of these you collect, which ones you want to get, and uh, what else you want to see here in terms of Matchbox as we go later on in the year. As always, I'm Tommy with Diecast Emporium. Thank you so much for watching. We will see you in the next video.